prostatectomy. Proper positioning of the patient after anesthesia has been induced. The patient is positioned on the operating table in a supine position with his umbilicus over the break in the table. Cystoscopy, if clinically indicated, is performed as previously described. The table is extended maximally and placed in a mild trendlin position to increase the distance between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis and facilitate exposure into the pelvis. The suprapubic area is shaved. After the lower abdomen and external genital area are prepared and draped in the usual sterile manner, a no. 22 FR catheter is inserted into the bladder. After residual urine is drained, 250 ml of saline solution is instilled into the bladder and the catheter is clamped. Incision and exposure of the prostate A lower midline incision is made from the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis figure 41-7. It is deepened through the subcutaneous tissue. The linear ulba is incised, allowing the rectus abdominis muscles to be separated in the midline. The transversalis fascia is incised sharply to expose the space of rectus. At the superior aspect of the wound, the posterior rectus abdominis fascia is incised above the semicircular line to the level of the umbilicus and the peritoneum is then swept cephalid to develop the prevesical space. A self-retaining bowel for retractor is placed in the incision to retract the rectus muscles laterally. The anterior bladder wall is identified, and two 3-0 vicral stitches are placed on each side of the midline below the peritoneal reflection. A vertical cystotomy is made with an electrocautery. Using a pair of medicine balm scissors, the cystotomy is then extended cephalid and corded to within 1 cm of the bladder neck figure 41-8. Several pairs of stay stitches are placed using 3-0 vicral sutures on each side of the midline to facilitate exposure. A figure of 8 stitch using a 3-0 vicral suture is placed and tied at the most caudal position of the cystotomy to prevent further extension of the cystotomy incision during blunt finger dissection of the adenoma. Alternatively, a transverse bladder incision can be used. After the bladder is inspected, a well-padded, malleable blade is placed in the bladder, connected to the bowel for retractor and used to retract the bladder cephalid. The bladder neck and prostate gland can now be visualized. A narrow diva retractor can be placed over the bladder neck and used to further expose the trigon. Indigo carmine dye may be given intravenously to aid in the visualization of the urethral orifices if it should be necessary. A nucleation of the adenoma and electrocautery is used to create a circular incision in the bladder mucus distal to the trigon, see figure 41-8. Care is taken not to injure the urethral orifices. Using a pair of medicine balm scissors, the plane between the prostatic adenoma and the prostatic capsule is developed at the 6 o'clock position figure 41-9. Once a well-established plane is created posteriorly, the prostatic adenoma is dissected circumferentially and inferiorly toward the apex, using blunt dissection figure 4110. At the apex, the prostatic urethra is transected using a pinch action of the two fingertips avoiding excessive traction so as not to avulse the urethra and injure the sphincteric mechanism. At this point, the prostatic adenoma, either as one unit or as separate lobes, can be removed from the prostatic fossa. Hemostatic maneuvers after the adenoma is inucleated, the prostatic fossa is inspected for residual tissue. If found, these nodules are removed by sharp or blunt dissection. The prostatic fossa also must be examined for discrete bleeding sites that frequently can be controlled with an electrocautery or 4 to 0 chromic suture ligatures. In addition, a zero-chromic suture is used to place two figure of eight stitches to advance the bladder mucosa into the prostatic fossa at the five and seven o'clock positions at the prostatovesicular junction to ensure control of the main arterial blood supply to the prostate figure 4111. With this maneuver, hemostasis is usually complete. If hemorrhage remains pronounced despite the hemostatic stitches, 
an umbutton nylon purse string suture can be placed around the vesicle neck, brought out through the skin, and tied firmly, as described by Malament, 1965. This maneuver closes the bladder neck and tamponades the prostatic fossa. The nylon suture is removed by cutting it at the skin and applying gentle traction on postoperative day 2 or 3. Plicating sutures can be placed transversely in the posterior prostatic capsule to prevent further bleeding, as described by O'Connor, 1982. Closure and O. 22 FR urethral catheter with a 30 ml balloon is passed through the urethra into the bladder. In addition, and no. 20 to 24 FR malagot suprapubic tube is placed into the dome of the bladder and secured with a 4 to 0 chromic purse string stitch. The suprapubic tube exits the bladder through a separate stab incision at the lateral aspect of the dome, avoiding the peritone cavity figure 4112. Next, the cystotomy incision is closed in two layers. The first layer of closure is performed using a 2 to 0 vical suture to create two running stitches. Care is taken to get a small amount of bladder mucosa in the stitch. The two stitches begin cephalid and cordad and meet in the middle of the bladder, where they are first tied separately and then together. Previously placed 3 to 0 vical stay sutures are tied over the first layer of closure to complete the two layer closure. With this approach, the bladder closure is watertight and completed in a timely manner. 50 ml of saline solution are placed in the balloon to ensure that the catheter balloon remains in the bladder and does not retract into the prostatic fossa. The urethral catheter and suprapubic tube are irrigated to confirm a watertight closure and to verify that hemorrhage is minimal. A small Closed suction drain is placed through a separate stab incision lateral to the bladder. The drain exits the skin on the opposite side of the suprapubic tube. The pelvis is irrigated with copious amounts of normal saline solution, and the rectus fascia is closed with an O. 1 PDS suture on it by a needle in a running fashion. The skin is closed with skin staples. Next. The suprapubic tube and drain are secured to the abdominal wall, and the urethral catheter is anchored to the lower extremity.